what you what you sense in yourself as consciousness, the presence emanates from the source of all life, which we can call God. So you are an emanation of God. Go back to the source. Conscious connection with source. So the consciousness that pervades is this universe that is this universe that becomes focalized through this particular form. This consciousness that you can know in yourself consciously as a presence that and you are that presence, you don't have it. You don't have consciousness, you are consciousness. And even to say I am conscious is not quite correct. I am consciousness is more correct. So you are consciousness. Now, where if it's not if it, if the brain just is a transformer of consciousness, a receiver of consciousness, a channel of consciousness, where does this consciousness come from? Where does it emanate from? And this, it, the consciousness does not exist in this dimension. That's important, very important to realize. Uh, this dimension is the physical dimension. The physical dimension is where your physical body is and the physical objects of the senses. Then underneath the physical begins already that which is not part of the physical dimension and that already begins with your thoughts. Even your thoughts have an, are, are, are not part of this physical dimension anymore. They, they live in another, they exist in another dimension. And this is, you're going below the surface of, this is the surface world of physical things. You and your physical body. You go by be, being aware of your thoughts already not part of the physical dimension. They are already exist in a, a deeper dimension. How do we know that? Because you cannot find a thought in the physical realm. You, I can, if a, a surgeon could open your brain looking for your thoughts, he would not be able to find a single thought because we don't know, nobody knows what a thought is and where thought lives. Where does it live in you? Does every atom represent a thought? Do some molecules represent the memory of what happened to you on that day when you were 10 years old and millions of other memories? Where do they live? All languages. I, <laughs> I know, apart from English, I know two other languages where well, they're getting a little rusty, but somewhere, those two languages that I know, they live somewhere, but where? Where do they live? At the moment, I'm not conscious of them. If, if something after say something in German or Spanish, suddenly something something would come. I I could say it, but, but where where does this whole thing live? It's it, it, thought is and then it's come emotion again. Emotion you cannot find. Emotion has certain uh, correlates with certain physical processes, just as thought does. You can imagine something and then the body reacts to it. You imagine you're drinking lemon juice right now. Immediately saliva will start accumulating in your mouth because your body thinks it's real. <laughs> and if you get angry, your stomach lining, the inside will become red and many other things will happen in your body as you become angry. So, but the anger itself does not exist in the physical realm. It, it affects the, the physical, but it, it in itself, it, uh, and th then you go further down and into the unseen. So in other words, consciousness is not of this dimension. 
consciousness represents another dimension, the transcendent dimension. Uh, so this, the consciousness that you are emanates from another dimension and comes then into this and an awakening happens. My suggestion to you is to consider the possibility, this is my intuitive realization, I don't want to convince you that it is correct, but it is my intuitive realization. It, the consciousness emanates from the source of all life, which of course does not exist here. It is, but it doesn't exist. Consciousness is the emanation of God in the same way that light is the emanation of the sun. Consciousness is the emanation of God into this dimension. And it seems that gradually the light of consciousness flows, increases in this dimension, gradually. You can see it in yourself, how gradually you, you grow in consciousness. You seem to grow in consciousness. And you are only a microcosm of the macrocosm. Whatever happens in you can tell you a lot about, about the universe. If you could understand yourself, you could uh, you understand the universe. So consciousness comes into this dimension more and more. Consciousness itself is timeless. And then it, it enters this dimension where uh, there is time. And there you, you experience it as a, 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 an intensification of consciousness. You become more conscious. A human can become more conscious. The entire planet gradually is becoming more conscious. If you go back millions and millions and millions of years, the life on the planet was less conscious than it is now. Even animal life and plant life was less developed, less differentiated less complex, gradually the, the, the world is being created still. The creation of the world is still happening. The entire process, we have no idea why this is happening, what the purpose of it is. You cannot understand it conceptually. It's such a vast, vast process. But all you need to know is what you, what you sense in yourself as consciousness the presence emanates from the source of all life, which we can call God. So you are an emanation of God. And this is why sometimes this realization is called God realization. God in you, God as you. Then the question arises, does that mean that you are God? Well, yes and no. I wouldn't go so far because the ray of sunlight is an intrinsic part of the sun, undoubtedly. But if the ray of sunlight could speak and the ray of sunlight said, I am the sun, well, in one sense, yes. In another sense, no. The sun is uh, uh, the the power of the sun is so infinite. How can a ray of sunlight compare itself? And yet, yet it is one with the sun. So there's a little paradox here. Uh, the essence of who you are is eternally connected to the essence of all life. You are an emanation of the one, appearing as many. That's a wonderful to realize that the, who, you, who you truly are, your home, 
is there. You are that. And the, the sense of being a disconnected fragment in this universe, in a hostile universe, that, that disappears. That is a delusion. The e delusion of the ego is that you are a disconnected fragment in a hostile universe. That's how egos perceive themselves. And that illusion dissolves. And when, as you become more rooted in that presence that you are, th this, the peace, a, a very powerful sense of peace is there then always in the background of your life because it, you have that sense of connectedness to the transcendent, to God, that sense of connectedness to God. And then the, the, that is the end of living in a state of fear, fear, anxiety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is the state of connectedness. Ah. Oh. That means you're already home. I always think that the famous OM sound and the English word home are related. It's not by accident that they are so similar. I am home, home, home. Oh. So that is through self-transcendence, you realize this, the one self that you are an expression of. Oh. And for many people, self-transcendence does not come until the dream of a separate self becomes unbearably difficult and painful. For many people, I'll repeat it, self-transcendence does not come until your so-called life gets very unpleasant and very difficult and you experience all kinds of loss and limitation. And then something can happen that suddenly this, when the self becomes very unsatisfying and limiting and painful, then for something opens up, then the self gives way and you transcend it and you realize the essence of who you are beyond the person, the being. But you don't have to wait for that. And many of you have already been through the painful this, the experience of suffering, which is inseparable from considering yourself to be a separate entity, suffering. Suffering is that which leads you to awakening. That's a miracle. Ultimately, suffering is transcended, but it is not transcended until the self is transcended, the limited egoic self. But until that happens, suffering is the most important thing in your life, the most indispensable thing in your life is suffering. It's the way. Suffering is the way until it's not needed anymore, but it leads potentially to self-transcendence. When this, the self becomes too unpleasant, you can't stand it anymore. You, you, it, it, the pain is too much. <clears throat> so that's, that's, these are the, the uh, in the ancient teachings, that's, 
the importance of suffering. So when it happens in your life, uh, welcome it. Suffering happens when loss happens on whatever level, loss of possessions, loss of status, loss of certain physical abilities, loss of loved ones, etc., etc., that brings about a lot of suffering. Many other forms of suffering are only created by the human mind, like many forms of anxiety and fear created almost exclusively but just by the mind. Suffering, I teach suffering, said the Buddha. I teach suffering and the end of suffering. <laughs> and the same message is symbolic form in Jesus on the cross is the archetypal image of suffering. Jesus is the archetypal human, represents every human. And this is the image of ultimate suffering. This is a death on the cross and resurrection, self-transcendence. That's beautiful teaching contained in, in the image in an image so people can intuitively understand it without having the ability to understand it conceptually. Even a very simple person could intuitively get this message. <laughs> <laughs>